Chapter 1 Terry Who Always I Wanted to Sculpt for Disney Even as a little girl, I was always creating something my grandfather told me. All men must work for a living. However, a wise man plays for a living. When you get paid to do what you love, it never feels like work. I love to play. I never forgot his advice. Therefore, I always played for a living. Early on, discovering the love of performing on stage, I decided to be an actor. Though ongoing, funny producers didn't favour my look. Not taking it personally, acting was put on the back burner. While my focus turned to become an artist, I was going to work for Disney. I told everyone my plans, reactions less than favourable. Often considered scrunched up faces saying, You'll never make it, and questioning me with their fingers wagging. What makes you so special? My favourite criticisms include, Get a real job and stop dreaming. Artists are always broke. Yes, the words of discouragement were thrown at me, left and right. Fortunately, my parents were my rock. They gave me the support that was very much needed. My mother was an artist, so she understood. She would paint for hours while I sat watching a great, so the most beautiful watercolours I would ever see. To honour my decisions, she would say, Terry, your dream is to be a trash collector. I support it. Like my father was a dreamer. He would sit with us children for hours, tell us wonderful stories. These stories include amazing people. Like my grandfather, who came of adversity, who overcame adversity, become successful in the field. You can do it too, Terry, if you believe, he would say. You could do it. Then, once you do, teach others to do the same. There's nothing more fulfilling than teaching someone knew how to do how to want how to what you have learned never give up on your dreams okay good enough for me in response to their love and support i drew and drew refining my craft for years for varying sources i picked up the skills i could additionally i practiced all the time unfortunately my grades were not good enough for the big colleges, so I went to the L.A. Valley College. Instead, I received some grant money. However, the bulk of my tuition was paid by drawing portraits for whatever, for whoever, whoever would have them. On a call at lunch, sketching and promoting, I just shared my work with anyone who would listen. It was a great little business. How did I get into sculpting? In college, there was quite courses and electives through classes. A student gets a choice. An artist's requirement was to make, take a beginning drawing class and well start a sculpting class. My sculpting class instructor was a fine man called Johnny Barovo. He was an amazing teacher. If you've ever been fortunate to be taught by a teacher who would change your life forever, you know what I mean. I was lucky as over the years I've had three such teachers. Mr. Bravo, or Joe as he liked to be called, was focused and very passionate about art. He especially loved sculpting. I got a kick out of him as he ironed his jeans. Who does that? I thought. Wearing those pressed jeans, he guided us through all types of art materials. Nevertheless, once I put my hands to clay, I knew that this was a meeting for me. He explained we live in a three-dimensional world. Furthermore, he described that we ourselves are three-dimensional, front, back, and sides. When you draw, you're tempted to squeeze three dimensions into a two-dimensional piece of paper. Until that moment, I don't realize that artists, that this phenomenon proved me, drove me a little nuts. Once Joe introduced me to Clay, I experienced an amazing sense of freedom. As a sculpting, you sculpt. What you see in front, back, side, and sides. Woo woo! I was hooked. Classes with Joe were often rocky, as he did not. We did not always agree. My first project assignment required students to sculpt a likeness of one of our hands. Apparently, we showed him my art. It looked really cool. He raised it, uh, uh, it as if to study it. Then he dropped it to the floor. We watched as my first sculpture fell in horror, shattering a million pieces. Well, I horror, I blew it off, saying, No problem, 
It's just a practice piece. My fist clenched, and that, and with my, with my face red and angry. Vanga, I thought, are you kidding? Really? Always pushing my buttons. He continued on with that kind of attitude. Well, I would say one thing, and he would adamantly disagree. On the flip side, he would say something, and I would disagree. What I did not realise until much later in Samenster was that, as a teacher, you're purposely exercising my brain and testing my limits. There is, that is what good teachers do to their students. Teachers like him help you to do, be the best you can be, even when you cannot see it for yourself. Joe Barrero helped me to develop and experience art in many different ways. Much, most experiences I hated, but I admit he inspired me. We are still friends today. On a few years of college, it was time to get out into the workforce, practice and honed my craft. I was eager to work and was ready. I had my sights on the film industry. So in my artistic abilities, included all types of mediums, including soft foam, hard foam, paper mache, and clay. If a character or image could caught my eye, I would, would try to capture it in whatever medium was available. There was a need for a particular fool would achieve the look I d- desired. I would make, I would just make it. Often I find myself scouring the stores, looking at anything, everything closely to try and determine if it found items could be used for sculpting tool. Becoming quite good at the tool acquisition. Today I'm known for my slightly unorthodox sculpting techniques and allowed me to work as a sculptor in the film industry for many years. Constantly creating and always in motion, this became my key to achieving my dream. This is key to achieving your dream too. Always be in motion. While it's imperative you start, you must constantly continue to do what you do and allow the maturity for money to come. Stay in motion and document all the work along your journey. Take pictures, 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 pictures. You need to not like what you did after it's finished. Take a picture of it anyway. Because the countless photos I took along the way, creating a portfolio was simple. As an artist, a portfolio is your number one marketing tool. It allows you those those who want to hire you to see what you have created. Working on a variety of projects for an array of companies, I worked flittering from job to job, similar to bird flittering from flower to flower. Freelance work got me hired. A freelancer is a person who is hired for an isolated project. When that project is finished, you are get you are let go from that company to move to the next job. As a freelance worker, you rarely hired as an employee. You attempt as a co- or a consultant. It takes a long consultation, really dry, real drive and focus. Be a fair answer. Some artists can do it, other many artists cannot. I loved it. During this period, I constantly applied to Walt Disney imagery. If any of you have ever done this, you probably have at least one happy rejection letter, beautifully adorned with a happy Ma- Mickey Mouse at the top. I think I received about half a dozen rejections where Mickey's outstretched arms seemed to taunt me. Soon my mother was hired at Walt Disney imagining. I thought, score, this ought to be easy to get in now. I never learned about the little blue card of working as a manager. This wondrous little blue card was the key of locking the mysteries to get hired at Walt Disney imagining. This card would attract the top of your application. So as it is significant that anyone, someone inside imagining recommended you, just get, like a get out of jail free card. You would whisk past the Disney guard dogs straight in line for an interview.